Okay, they're pleasant and all, but we don't need to continue the crickets. We really don't. What we need to do is step up into our responsibility. No one likes to hear that. No one wants to do that. We'd rather have a nice life to go live. But that hasn't been what's happened. Again, the only reason why I think that, well, that I'm even here is because that did not happen. And over my time of research, decades now, looking earnestly at this problem and what's gone on, we're into something that's been coming on us and has decided, there's a bunch of people that have decided that they know better for us what is to be made of us. And this is on a global scale. And as I've, I admit freely, it's almost incomprehensive to me how that was even how that's even possible. I'm just a little guy in the world making my way through. How do these people get together and how do they do it over such a long time? Now we can get deeper into it and it gets pretty deep. But just for the moment of our time here right now, and I don't mean just the broadcast, I mean in our lives here, there's a great crime against a people. And I don't know how anybody can sit back seeing any part of it, and continue to allow it to happen, unless they're uh, an accessory, a perpetrator, a closet perpetrator, or or what? I mean, whatever you want to call it. I don't even like giving titles. In fact, you give, it, give it a name. You can give it a name. You own it. You can, you can run that around. You can beat it against the wall if you want. But is it going to help anybody? Is it going to stop this nonsense? And before I run away too far, for those of you on uh, recast and broadcast, or past cast, in particular at the ucy.tv or on on the archives, or at BitShoot or mind, Minds.com, we can go. You can go to uh, if you need to do a search and you can't find the link and get to the broadcaster page. If you could put in a Real Liberty Media or Behind the Woodshed and the code for the broadcast BTW RLM two four three, I think it is this week. That should get you to the broadcaster to get all the notes that I read from, the, the, the notices, the, the information coming from the websites that are out there that we can see. And I kind of pick through through it at some point. Sometimes I just read the titles, if those of you haven't heard me. It just gives me a, a departure point to discuss things. Uh, because it's not about those stories, actually. It's about the information you can get, the notices you, you're given, the directions that you can see things are going, good, bad, or indifferent. And we all have that decision to make. And then uh, it seems that you, it doesn't matter where you go, you're going to find, you should find. Well, I can't imagine every, the world is such a rosy place, but uh, you should find a wrong that needs to be made right. And that's just a, you'll find that ultimately it all seems to tie back in through all the plan that's being implemented against us. And it takes a long time to ed, uh, educate people into what that is. And worse of the problem is to get people to respond to it. As I, I just flabbergasted. Uh, really, uh, all you all that listen to me, even uh, my my dedicated listeners, is very few of you that actually uh, seem to respond. I just uh, amazed, or at least you don't tell me. Why wouldn't you tell me? Why wouldn't we work together about telling me? So I don't. I just take the fact of the silence is more crickets. Even those uh, those that would claim for us, uh, all of us that would claim to know. This is an inter- information exchange condition that we need uh, to bring people up to speed and focus them on on their on their wrong that they need to make right. It's not going to happen on its own. It's not going to. Ha- it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen by not doing something. You got to find some place to fit, even if you don't like doing something. Find the least that you might like doing. Do that part. Hand someone else their better quality that they can do. As I've told you, I do with my colleagues. People I cannot talk to, I have found other people that can talk to them. So through them, I talk to the ones I can't talk to. Whatever my failings are to communicate my ideas that uh, that are actually just the facts of the thing, the, the, whatever the objective basis is out there, I just point you to it. Uh, sometimes people don't want to hear it from me. And I, a lot of people don't. Look at, look at my, I have no follow, less than necessarily no following wherever we go. Very small subscriberships wherever we go. Uh, very, very short, small listenership compared, to, you know, it blows me away. Billions, billions of connections to YouTube. And I can't find 40 people in a week on YouTube to listen to this broadcast or respond to me to tell me why they're not listening. I mean, you got to have a sense to want to listen, first of all. So that just, you, you have to see how small a, a, a race of people you are. Let's get all this racist technology out right now. We'll get it right there. Or the smaller race of people you all are that even listen weekly. When I, I'm still astonished, I bring out things that you really need to know. I mean, the nuts and bolts. 
to lay out the limitations for what we call government, those in government trying to beat you down. And I hardly get a... a I don't know how people div, divine this before they click the button. The week, last week, the first hour, and I took a whole, I didn't, you know, again, the time just passes as I talk, and I'm, I'm not just talking. I'm giving you some solid information. Last week, I should have had thousands of people tuning in to understand what I was saying, at least in the first hour. If you talk, th- th- think the last hour was just a bunch of blah, blah, gibberish. The first hour, I was telling you some very important information. And I gave you a proof for it. Now, I purposely didn't cite it to you because I wanted some, I want, I actually want to see how many people are actually grabbing this stuff up. Are you using it? If I don't tell you, do you seek it out? Do you continue to seek out what I don't tell you? Did you go find, re, I was reading word for word. Did you type any of those words in, in a, in parentheses, excuse me, in, in, in quotes on a search engine? Hopefully not Google. Maybe DuckDuckGo, maybe Start Page, maybe Yandex, even the Russian one, better than Google. Did you do that for yourself to go find maybe what I was talking about to see it was a legitimate statute that a le- that the judiciary in a state shall regard, and that requirement, that mandate, of, is a prohibition against your an interference with you or those that are inside that statute. Did anybody go try to find that out? I don't know. No one told me. But the point is, that this is how we're not integrated. I, I, I don't, I can't tell you how powerful, and I'm not even asking you all to go back and listen to the what it, and even if you don't understand it or not, or whether it meant, meant anything to you or not, whether you can identify with that or not. We talk about identities. I'm going to show you. I'm going to talk about status. I showed you an untouchable status, notwithstanding anything you've heard about you being property, being subject to the government, being uh, being able to be beat down. I'm not saying the criminal won't beat you down. The lawless beats you down. I'm saying that that was the proof right there in one statement, not even the full statement, of a limitation and prohibition against your being interfered with by government. And that ain't the only one. I just pointed to one to you to kind of try to give you the simple answer right up front and hope more people would dig in. And I only get 40 people that go to YouTube when there's billions of connections a week. We have a serious dysfunction in the world. I'm, I'm sitting here just quiet about that. I got to, I can't let too much dead airspace for radio. That's just the way that works. So I got to interrupt with the silence by saying I'm being silent. I want you to think about that. Now, Minds.com, we have another, I have another link, another account there, and thank you for everybody that's working on Minds.com to get the word out. We have more, more connections on Minds.com than we do out of YouTube. Think about that, folks. Bit shoot, not so much. But it's there. And thank you for those that are listening in later on Bit shoot. And wherever else you're finding the broadcast. And UCY.TV, thank you this week. You, you clicked on a little bit more. Actually, UCY seemed to be more integrated with the title. I did a very simple title. Patently or otherwise. And apparently, every time I use a technical word that actually means law in objective basis, no one wants to click on it. It's really fascinating to me. Why is that? What is, what's what's inborn in us that is a, is a limitation for us? Is one of the things that is preyed upon. And I bring up these documents that are you can make up with them what you want. You can listen to those that would say, like in this case, the protocols of the elders of the elder, uh, elder, whatever the protocols of the elders of Zion. You can believe that's a counterfeit, and then you can understand the word counterfeit means there was original. You can believe it's a hoax. I told you to go look at that as a um, uh, your human animal frailty manual. A lot of people have. A lot of people have, but they don't put it in practice. They don't actually understand those really are working. And until you truly get those in the depth of your soul, that that's what's under attack, you won't have, you, you, you are not going to be as functional as you need to be. And that, when you start seeing that, it opens up your mind. All this stuff opens up your mind. You want to talk about critically thinking? We're talking about critically thinking and application, not just thinking, contemplating your navel on what you thought you knew was right. So, I, you know, come behind the woodshed, or maybe I'm, putting spankings on y'all right here, but I mean, this is really a major failure. I think this turns on our character. And, and I, I, th- I, I think we, we need to be a lot more responsible to ourselves. 
kind of like the long question in my life, what is it to be a man? What is that? Then you slowly just start seeing how that works out. But we've grown up into this this whole system. I don't think any of us have, has escaped it, where it was like an altered reality and an altering reality. Remember, and don't under, don't forget the importance of this. Uh, I, I brought it up and some doctor doing study on it showed us, and I did the report because it was important to understand the dynamic. It, it speaks to the protocols of the elders, uh, 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 protocols of the elders of Zion, manual of your of your frailty, that you can be normalized into deviance. Why it's so important to maintain a principal standard? Now, what you and, and in the ideology of the of the woodshed here is that we went behind the we went behind the woodshed to get those principles. The ones we were just going to not not li- live by, and we but we needed. And someone who who loved us, and I know that I know the conundrum here uh, about about that problem about being I love you, so I beat you. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. You don't beat someone to hurt them. You, you get their attention. I understand there's a whole argument against that, but that's how we brought up. And there's a and the idea about it is valid. You got to get your attention to understand. There's a principle you're going to have to understand about this. When you go into the future, and so whatever our whatever the misgivings of what that might mean, it's just an idea to get people moving on the on the right proper course because it's irrelevant. You're going to have to get out from behind a woodshed at some point in your life, become responsible. And you're going to have to apply whatever principles you gathered and carry with you. And I don't see a lot of that real principle sticking very long with people. And I understand and see a dysfunction in us. We're not capable as people to see through. I see lots of people that want to be handed an answer. Why I partly don't tell you a lot, but they don't understand how it's going to implement. I get this all the time. It's not like I'm so also all-knowing. I just know where I've been. I know what the information I have has to do. I know where it's going to go. I know how it's going to be mistreated. And I know what I know about how to set the records and make the observations that will help. Uh, identify that not just for yourself improve and confirm you the the rightness of your position and that you're there but that you're there before a criminal and the record shows that for everybody else who's in dismay over that that's another frailty we tend to agree to authorita we don't ever check it check it uh, and this is what i was talking last week my main problem with the bundies is for all they say they know about the constitution they are not checking for constitutional establishments which is required in every case why don't people just do that? Even if I'm wrong about the USDC courts, and this is only one question, there's a whole lot about challenging all this. As anybody who starts looking at this starts to see, why don't you just prove out uh, that they either have or have no jurisdiction and that there's a territory over which they're established or not? Why don't you just ask that to verify, as your duty, your duty bound to do to verify that justice can be done? Why don't we see these very basic conditions? Is, blows me away when I can point to you uh, the statutes I've told you. And then, I, like I said, I'm so uh, glad to hear Ranchero 42. If I got the name wrong last week, I'll fix it. I think it was Ranchero 42 on, on Twitter, doing the, re, doing the basic research about that. He found out what I was saying. It's there. This is not a secret. The, you, we live in an incompetent society on the official level. It doesn't mean that you have to really suffer it without a, a say. And this is the other aspect of being silent. So uh, I do want to point out something as I think about it now. I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to say it here because it occurs to me that uh, based on the Bundy condition, the land use, the bu- public lands, the question, and it's a false imposition that the, uh, the lands of the state underneath federal control are state lands. They do have they do have concurrent jurisdiction, but the underlying t- title, if, we, if I can call it that, is, is in the federal government. Now, Bundy, and this is where I wanted to—I wanted to touch on the problem. I, I could tell you, and and I, this is what triggered me to think about it last week. I think it was Clint Richardson was going and telling you how the op- opinion that the lands are of the state, and I actually have to go back. And this is—I don't study—I haven't studied this very carefully to be able to really talk clearly to it. There is a distinction in the enabling acts of, of Nevada which could alter this, but let me just go with the other side that makes it simpler, and it's across the western states. But the land that was reserved to the, or it was essentially ceded or not accepted as a, from, the, from the territory to the state is not state land. 
They, it's just within the borders of the state. This is like in holdings. The, but, and let me, so Clive and Bundy has been pushing this idea that those public lands are state lands. Last week I heard Clint Richardson showing you, uh, going through his research to show you that it can't be. Well, my problem with that wasn't that it, and this is where you get have to start to parse the problem. It's not that anything that was said there was wrong. It's that what if that doesn't apply anymore because Congress did give it its consent in a different way? Then all the proof that went into proving Clive and Bundy's opinion of how he has his property is right is actually not relevant. And what if Clive and Bundy has the wrong idea about how he has the land and property, but it's based on the wrong idea because he misapplied or applied some mis, mis, some information wrongly. As I've been trying to show you, you have to take the information and apply it right. Where it re- meets the road, rubber meets the road, it has to be getting traction. So in one hand, you can attack uh, Clyburn and everybody who, and I've, listen, I've been up against the attorneys who want to kind of claim this too, and we found this out to be a fraud, what they're trying to do to try and inspire states' rights over lands that are supposed to be disposed. You have to understand what I just said there clearly. But to say what Cliven's position to prove Cliven wrong and then claim that that dissolves what his rights are, or the family's rights are, that's wrong. That's incorrect. Because what if there's another theory, if I can call it a theory at all? There's actually a fact that it makes irrelevant the point about the states not owning the land. How does the land get disposed is what I tell you about. And what wasn't mentioned was, and it, it comes under a couple, but I'm going to focus on one today because I didn't want to give, I wasn't even thinking about going here, but I'm going to talk, talk to you because it just it struck me that it needs to be clarified. Last week I talked about patents, and there's something called as patent. And miners have that on their claims prior to the issuance of patent. And I mentioned, I think, that miners gained the right to go after the minerals before the mining law. In a recognition in the courts a year, uh, two years before, a year and a half or so, in the Swift case, on a provision of land use and uh, almost like latches in equity where you are, you, you tolerate uh, what you claim to be a harm, you tolerate. And you tolerate it long enough that it becomes the real, the real point. But there was an underlying point about the fact of the letting someone go, like the miners go get the minerals, even though you were sending your armies out to beat down them and kill the, the miners. They still did it. They were outlaws. But a court case came along and said, Congress is actually sitting in this property as a fiduciary. It's a, in a fiduciary, not as a actual possessor outright and uh, against all comers. This was in relationship to how it acquires and has the property relative to the enabling it. The provision of the conveyance for miners was in 1864, and I believe the Bundy's right, although they acquired it in 1877, it its provision actually predates this, but it's on the same principle, where the government, on the public land, and let's make a distinction between public land open for disposal and the public domain, which is disposed, in the public land, if someone goes out and makes lawful use of the land, and does it for such a time, and is not dis- displaced by the owner, in this case the federal government, there's something called forbearance that provides the rights, the property that was used in the land, because all land is actually sitting and needs a use, a good use. And if it, it's not supposed to sit in waste, that's a, actually an international crime. So that so it's irrelevant. It, so that the Bundys, by uh, there's another theory of how they have their they have their right because they claimed it. They have a, a document that says they claimed it back in the time. Uh, but even if I don't use that, the fact of the existence of the family doing the use and the use of the fodder and the water and the recognition of that right recorded in the state made this state this is made property under state law, and it disposed that part of the public land and by the function of law, made it public domain. It's no longer public land, that part. Now, there could be multiple uses, 
but I don't talk about it on the administrative side, the multiple use. If you looked at pictures of the Bundy um, holdings, you'll see they are having cattle, and around them, the miner has railroad tie restriction walls built up around their mining shafts. You, Anybody who looked at that and missed the multiple use in the disposal of the surface and the dominant or subsurface missed a big clue that those were two disposals that moved the land from public land into into private holding, possession. And either one, if it was done back when, in the day, would have been both a claim by forbearance, where the government, the federal government didn't throw up, is a consent. So it doesn't matter at the point of that point, and there's even more authority now, they have their documentation. Everyone's got the miner has their documentation. The miner has the law now. There is a, a conveyance of property and consent from Congress to dispose that land to the use that was the, the first, the first arrivers for those particular things. That it makes irrelevant the fact of who owns the property. That that became the focus has really been the big problem. Because the forbearance or, and or the law of Congress providing the, the trust establishment by the law for the disposal, is the consent of Congress that eliminates that question completely, which Clive and Bundy has been, I think, under misunderstanding, misframes how he has the property, and that allows someone to, to attack him as being wrong, and then he looks wrong. And I look at it from the, I can keep telling you about going to the law of the land, and these grants, and how this works, and the this concept called forbearance, and we have the, I go and give you the proof about the Swift case, because that was the miners' connection, and it's it's a stated case of how the court caused Congress to acknowledge later in the mining law that it had forbeared to do that, and those people do have the property that they possess and claim by their work. This is always about work as well. Everyone misses this. No one else put the work on there. And, and so there's a... I wanted to point out, I wanted to see if I didn't say it clearly enough. I can prove... Like uh, colleagues, I, I hope he's a colleague uh, and a friend and all that. We haven't talked for a long time. I wish we would talk more. But uh, I would, I can prove as my colleague that Clive and Bundy's approach and other people's approach that say that though public land is state land, I can disprove that. And that where Clive and Bundy says I'm, uh, he he's claiming by that authority is wrong, doesn't make his property no less the conveyance that it is by another means under the law, recognized by the courts as well, and and deemed to be a consent of Congress, which causes the fulfillment of the obligation of Congress relative to its holding of the so-called public land, which is actually held in trust. And let me offer this other observation. How can a a, a, a different authority on a different style disposal that we talk about, I mentioned this last week as well, about the disposal of the soil to the use of the highway was deemed by a court in a case, and we, you can go to jeffersonmoneydistant.com, get the highway's document. It's listed, I think, in the first couple, couple pages. It, it, it talks to this, and I think it was a railroad issue. Uh, they had a contention about this, these, um, these, these rights-of-ways over the railroad uh, that, that pre-existed. But it says in there that these disposals are pre-existing claims of possession. In the highway, it's by the public, that common. Because it's not anybody's, it's everybody's. But it's a pre-existing claim of possession. Can't be an authority that the United States government owns without any obligations. It owns consistent with that. that There's a pre-existing claim of possession by the people for the lawful uses of the land. I don't hear anybody talking about so I just wanted to clarify something I heard. It was a little bit troubling. Even though I could prove that Clive and Bundy is wrong in asserting that state law runs this. doesn't mean all his actions are wrong either. I'm just saying, based on his claim that his state law runs this, I can prove that that's not state land that he had. It doesn't mean that he's wrong in his possession. Though I can prove him wrong there, it doesn't mean that he's wrong. And that's what people, I think, are missing. And there's a, and I would alter this a slight bit. What he has is under state law as far as its, its remedies. 
It's no longer public land. It's just those parts that he has right to claim is public domain disposed to his use and pro- supposed to be protected. And it's protected under grant law. It's not protected underneath the statutes. It's not protected. It's only prohibited to this government by pro- by saving clauses. So there's a I can prove him wrong like anybody who's done the research, but he's not wrong. He's wrong because he's asserted the wrong reason why he holds his lawful possession against everybody, the whole world. His possession of the forage is no different than your uh, miner's possession uh, of, of, of uncommon minerals. No common, no different than the uh, the disposal of the highway of all public use is not encroachable by my agencies at all. Their monitoring capacity is only their right to to look at the property and question it is only as a result of them monitoring so their plans, projects, and demonstrations won't interfere with it. And until people start understanding how this lines up, and and understand that you can you can prove someone wrong, but that may not be that they are wrong ultimately. We have to start understanding as well, because I think while we talk and bicker amongst ourselves in that, we miss the point and we destroy people's rights. We destroy their property. And we think we've got the answer. And there's a whole other set of, of applicable uh, provisions and principles that are being missed, not understood, either or, either not understood, or not even knowing they're there, or, or not, or intentionally not impu- uh, applying them. And that's what the courts are doing in Bundy. That's what the, uh, what the agencies are doing. Uh, that's what uh, the attorneys are doing. They're not applying the actual law that's supposed to be and allowing, uh, again, if I go to a court and I prove Clive and Bundy wrong, did that mean he was wrong in his possession? No. But that's what happens in the courts. They go and do the wrong argument and they get, find favor in people. And on the other side, because we're in this new dynamic about the Bar Association and their judges and their robed ones uh, implementing their House Resolution documentation that says they're going to impose upon you through various provisions that you don't have a property, they're going to limit your ability to prove your defenses against a trespasser who appears to have an authority like the federal government. And that's exactly what's going on in the, in the Bundy case. And I, and but for, uh, we're hearing that the Bundys are being uh, released to what they call pre-trial release, which is not true because they're already in a trial, as I understand it. They're being released, uh, based on a threat assessment. Uh, and I, I twittered back 20, November 21st when I found out there was a, a threat assessment that said there was no threat. I asked why the attorneys weren't using that as their response, uh, in defense of their, of their people. That you're hearing now, whether or not that's coinky dink, as I said in an email, uh, it's just a coinky dink that I said you needed to take that threat assessment that said they were not a threat and apply it as a as a response for the defendants. They're now getting out because of that threat assessment, whether or not what I said and someone saw that in an application, I don't know. My point is not that I said it is that it was there to do and do a certain way. It was there from the beginning, and it wasn't done. Men spend two years in jail over a complete travesty, and no one seems to understand how to parse this out. And I guess that's why I guess it, it bothers me. Um, a, a proof against what Cliven, what Cliven believes is his right to the land is incorrect, now becomes a condemnation of him, is the improper proof. And so as, as much as you can critically think and find the research that show that his his thought about how he holds the land is incorrect would be the wrong implementation of how he actually has that possession lawfully and against all comers, against uh, the whole world. And if you don't understand what I've said as a researcher, you haven't researched enough and I'm asking you to dig deeper. And so getting over to the things that bother us. The things that that have gotten a, how all these things that we believe we could prove were right that weren't. We don't we have a, a group of people, a profession, have their union that runs this place, universally runs this whole globe. We all run to their members in order to get the uh, the answer from the oracle. Uh we are damaged goods. And uh, long since known, and we can laugh about it, or we can just say we knew that happened and turn away from it. Uh, but we now are in the time and the day and the connection with the Internet in order to find uh, the proofs of how bad those in power will abuse their power. 
Uh, and uh, this is a distasteful story I want you just to know because it's important to me. When I came on to starting to apply what I thought I would seeing was knowing into the system and how I found it was the system becomes fronts for other crimes. Uh, you all see it now, but it wasn't so easy to see 20, 30 years ago. Uh, we we knew there was a problem, but it was harder to see that it was still you, you got the, the we had our own uh, rose colored glasses on even those that were researching and could see there was a real big problem and it wasn't following the so called objective basis that we're supposed to be living called this law, which is really their guidance. They weren't following it then, but we couldn't figure it out. Well, I started to see through a couple of cases that how how uh, child services was an abuse, how the system, the people in the system are using that as a front. We now see it as things like pedo gate and all that stuff. I told you all about this. I really don't like it's really distasteful to me. I don't want to get into it too much more, but to show you uh, and to be and to, uh, again because the story comes out, and I'll just read the, the title here: Cops and government workers arrested, massive sting, people buying kids as young as four for sex. Pretty sensational headline, but I don't know that it's not true, even though I don't have more proof than that headline. I'm reading the story. Seventy-nine predators, aren't these alleged predators anyway? Uh, but uh, some of whom were attempting to purchase children as young as four years old for sex is pretty, you know, what's the words for how important that is? But this is what I was trying to give, do a documentary on back in 2000. I started to look at that in 2000. Uh, they They collected me up when I was within a few weeks of finishing that. So they had inside knowledge. This is, I'm oblivious to all this stuff. I'm just doing a video documentary because I wanted to do the video. I just wanted to do that, something I was good at, and I uh, wanted to, to do it on that subject matter. Uh, they collected me up, destroyed my, project, my process. So that gave me a new insight on what was going on. This is about 2005 when that's all done. Uh, we, I, It's very clear to me, though I can't prove it to you, this was systemic. I told you about the Sandusky thing. I predicted... Though I can't tell you specifics, I predicted it was going to go bigger. I told you it was going to jump the pond because of the who was involved. It was in the judiciary already there. It goes from there immediately. What was that? The BBC pops up. So this was predictable based on what I found in a little place uh, uh, in Oregon. Uh, the, the, this is a, a systemic problem. Uh, so they, they find 79 uh, government workers uh, uh, and cops, okay? So the people in the government who are tasked and supposedly have this oath to uphold so-called law are actually using their positions. And this is what I found local to CSD. Uh, they use their positions, and they use things as fronts to continue their nefarious uh, operations. In this case, uh, uh, they saw, uh, kids, uh, little goats, trafficking little goats. Uh, so... You know, I don't even want to, look, I want to see there's more here to talk about. I don't want to talk about it. I want to say the people in authority have figured out how to use that as cover. It's not the government. It's these people running the levers of government. And if you hear that and that disgusts you, and, and I'm not saying everybody can, and I'm not, because I'm not in a position anymore to do it. Uh, I, I found another path that gave me a different foundation that sets the foundation to go after these guys now, but which I wouldn't have had if I'd have stayed up trying to make this so. Uh, but some of you should be sickened by this. And uh, it's not just happening in, in 79 per, uh, predators in New Jersey. That's the cover for the bigger one. Bigger, bigger ma mainstream. Why don't we hear this sting going, the so-called sting, going bound by those that would arrest the perpetrators, which may be bigger perpetrators, when you hear about the Catholic Church doing it? When you hear about the Pope coming in, he's the head of that. He should be responded superior at any level. He should have been picked up as soon as he hit the United States government as, as allowing this whole thing. Why isn't all that down there? And then you find out that the Bar Association is the advisor to the Holy See on the international level. Why do you think, folks? This is a systemic crime uh, against everyone. But it starts little. It starts with the little ones. And, they're, and that's part of our problem. Those Some of us didn't. I wasn't uh, anywhere. This is so. This is all. This is so foreign to my life. When we, I was brought up, I, I can't even really fathom it. Uh, but a lot of people didn't uh, escape these kinds of abuses. I say what we see in the so-called gender identity is fueled by the legal system, fueled by uh, the processes uh, that are provided for by the legal system and consensus and these associations and not uh, what do you call the. Um, uh, non-governmental agencies and the UN type stuff. It's all. It's not just the UN. It's just one of the hubs of what's coming, where it comes out. But uh, there's a lot of infrastructure, if you will, 
supporting this type of fronting of, of nefarious uh, organizations uh, doing things right in front of everyone's face and then you do it under cover uh, of the authorita. That's, you know, I said it's a felony, but you see it's even worse that the young ones are, have been predated on for a long time. Uh, like I said, it's not my world that I know of. Uh, I have no response to all that. Uh, but then again, I'm not trying to be, uh, you know, you see, I'm not, I don't have an identity other than I think it is in my physical reality. So I'm not, I'm not trying to run or cover for something. Uh, I'm not a victim and trying to maintain the victimhood, uh, to tell you that there's, we, there's lots of us that are abused and it comes out with all these deviancies that we see. The lack of principles, what we have is a problem. Uh, anyway, I won't dwell on that. It really sickens me just to, to watch that. But this is the system. This is what's people inside the worst. It's the cockistocracy. Why don't I come up with that word earlier? It's the cockistocracy. It's not the government that you thought was there. It's the cockistocracy that's been on, but now it's got, there's nothing restraining it at all. Even though the law that we all would say, oh, they yeah, laugh at it, it's there to say it's not supposed to happen. So as I say, we have an accountability problem in the minimum. And because there's no accountability, we see these kinds of attacks on our on the young. And it, it's not just on the young. I told you, you're going to do innocent things and in the uh, government, because I believe, uh, highly probable, it's a military consequence we're looking at. And we read the Libra Code to see all the earmarks. You know them when you see them. And when I told you, when you don't seize your law working, then maybe you're looking at the criminal. And it's in power because it has the power. It can hurt you. Uh, that we come in and we do our best to resist, or we do our best just to, even if we're complying with the law, you go from a little goat, the kid, and you move into so-called an adult, which is another animal name, an adult, an adult what, insect? You have metamorphosis, you went from a pupa to an adult. Did you hatch out of a, a cocoon? What? An adult. Anyway, you move from an from the gov- government perceives you as this animal, it moved from a, a kid, a little goat, to to a, an adult. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're gonna it doesn't matter how innocent you are. And here's another story, and not not to even fo- focus on it, but to no, I've been trying to warn you, be careful how you deal with things and what you do and understand the terrain, the battlefield you're walking into. If you don't think it's a battlefield, listen to this. Cops beat man until he defecates himself for paying a $10 fine in pennies. So someone had a traffic ticket and decided to go pay in pennies. Now we all understand that's a a pretty big pain and that someone would take a negative inference to that. But the clerk actually starts to berate him. The cops come in and start beating the guy up till he's unconscious. That's almost a near-death experience from my understanding when you do that to yourself. So not only does he have the public shame of that, he's been beat on. And then he gets charged with disorderly conduct for paying in a currency that's legal tender even. So if you think these abusers are only doing the little kids and they're, and they're, and they're setting it up to buy four-year-olds for the purpose, and listen, I mean, I don't want to get too deep in it, but you know that there's not going to be an evidence, a witness about that possibly. So there's much more heinous things that continue in that vein. But you go in and pay your your with lawful currency, your pennies, ten dollars worth. I've heard hundreds of dollars walked in and dumped on a counter to do this for taxes. For ten dollars now, they will beat you unconscious, and then charge you for the for the fact. Well, this gentleman pleads out, uh, and now he's suing for the fact that the plea was uh, it's extortion and coercion. And I hope they present present that, but that's exactly what the attorney finds is the way that works, is what I've been telling you again, and more confirmation. So you can't even walk. I've told you one day it's going to come, and it was soon here. We Within the time of this broadcast, it's only been a few, you know, about almost a decade now or so on, on, on the Internet. Uh, I've told you you're going to be an innocent man or woman, and uh, you will be you will be uh, treated as a criminal, presumed one charged as such. You can't be innocent. So all you all that think you can be innocent, I'm telling you that there's just no way in front of a criminal. They're there because they get the position because they're the worst at what they do. It's just a cover. It's all a big costume, and you really have to get this. These masks are just something that you have to understand is the problem. The, these costumes that we, we, we give people over, and I've just showed you last week 
that if you now this gentleman, I won't get into the traffic side quite yet, uh, but I don't think I don't think I go there this week. Uh, if he understood that he wasn't liable to trafficking, remember we just talked about trafficking in children and little kids. Trafficking, traffic is trafficking on the on the highway. I told you that was a pre-existing claim of possession by people. So we have complete extortion, and then he gets wrongfully extorted, just like his civil rights is be underneath someone who believes they are freed and then needed protection by the federal government. Title 42 U.S.C. 1981. He's paying in exactions of every kind. He got his civil rights to be to be knocked, beat up, and knocked out so bad that he defecates on himself for something he wasn't actually even doing, probably because most of us aren't doing trafficking when we're on the road, highway. And, and again, I, I read to you a passage about how that was last week. I, I've explained how easy it is to show these people are completely criminals, and everyone seems to think that they're not. And But they're in the position, they're the worst of the worst. That's how you get there in a caucusocracy. It looks like, it, it acts like a government, but it's just a bunch, it's an organized criminal syndicate. And I get real hard to have any other words to describe it by. And we say, oh, well, I know that, I know that. But see, by just saying that, we're not stopping it. And and I'm putting you on notice. I've been putting you on notice. Expect the day one day. You may escape, but expect the day you're doing nothing wrong, and then you're suffering this, and maybe worse. Maybe you don't survive. And then you don't even have a witness against their wrong, and they win. Why? Because they did they did what everybody did to Clive and Bundy. They agreed that uh, that his he was wrong in what he how he held his property, but didn't think there was another way he did it lawfully that he didn't even understand. Now let me get back to that a little quickly here. If, if forbearance is a consent by Congress to the disposal for the forage in the water, now under state law and regulated so by his filings up to the state. And that is protected as a disposal, what I would say, as patent, like the miners' cl mining claims prior to patent issuance are protected, secured, they say, secured as patent. And I just told you, at least in one state, that no suit shall interfere with the, with the patent of the United States, the disposal, essentially, the evidence of a disposal of the United States. How is the use of that land against the charge of the federal government, not a crime against the Bundys in the first instance. And how is the judge uh, sitting on the bench another criminal who doesn't allow the fact of the proper possession to be put in evidence? Uh, remember I talked to you about a case that we were involved in a long years ago, uh, about I think it was the Dusty Ford case, is a miner who got charged with cleaning up a, a dilapidated shack, cleaning it out, getting rid of the refuse, and the BLM charged him with uh, destruction of government property. Long story short on all that, I showed you that uh, our my colleague went in and talked to the attorney and said you need to have them produce their title to the land, and then you need to ask our miner that for his title to the land, and you need to assert that he has the title that, and they don't, and uh, that title provides that he has the right to do what he has to do there for what he was doing. And uh, the attorney forgot to ask that of the BLM agents four of them had to recall them back to the uh, back to the back to the uh, stand witness stand and I've told you the story report before so if you've heard it just uh, bear with me uh, she asked does the BLM because they asserted that the BLM had ownership she asserted asked them do they can you produce the title and none of them knew where to produce the title didn't know that they even had it. Didn't know they could find it. They didn't think they had it. They don't. So they don't, They could not produce on the witness stand that they had a title to the very thing they claimed the agency they worked for had possession of. And then the miner got put on the stand and said, "Do you have? Do you you, you profess to have title? Do you have it with you? Yes, we do. Oh, yes, I do. And so he produced. Well, can you show it to us? And he pulls out his claim papers. His claim papers is filed with the local county under state law. It's federal land under state law. It's disposed to the miner. It's secured as patent. He has title to the land where the federal agency doesn't because they're a trustee. They're holding the land for you and I to dispose with an obligation, not as a sovereign. And he produced that title to the land and he presents it and the jury will saw that. I understand because I wasn't there. I understand from a couple of witnesses the the eyes lit up on the 
the jury, the mouth dropped, and they said, "Can we?" Uh, it was asked, "Can we see that?" And they inspected this uh, official recorded document. It's a 14-inch long paper. It's legal, legal document, legal form. And he produced his title to that land, and they acquitted him of those charges. So I'm beyond uh, opinions here. Uh, that is a protection that they had no right, and it was an acquittal, so it wasn't perfect. They had no right to be a tress, a direct, um, attacking a, a land possessor, no different in that minor than Bundy's. So it's by a different, it's a different theory than the wrong one that that Cliven himself uses, or that he can be shown to be wrong in, but it doesn't dispossess him or change the relationship between Congress, their consent, and that disposal. That he's right, but not for the reasons that he said. I, I need people really to clearly understand this. So I'm off a tab back again to that, because that's really got me. I see this all the time. People making the wrong decision to prove you're wrong, and it's not even relevant. Not even part of the thing, actually. It's, it's not even part of the proof. And that's on his claim side. And I pointed out last week how you can show that the government doesn't have the right to attack. His, his, his rights are protected as, as if by patent. No suit shall be maintained. None. Even the response, as I'm now looking at this, the response by the other side by an attorney is a felony. Because that response in motion to the response under an apparent claim that they can divest the d disposal is a felony. Just by the sheer presentation of the paper. Now, I'm talking way outside of probably 99.99999, down to maybe me and one other guy, and maybe a gal, that knows about this. And I want to know why. Why am I the only one that knows about this? It's there to know. If you find yourself, you know, not understanding what I'm saying, I'm asking, we need to, we need to roll our sleeves up a little bit higher. It's not that hard to find. It's all right there. And I can't say I did it instantly. But I'm here to show you how you can do it almost, almost instantly with you. Again, Ranchero42 on Twitter. I think it took him three days. It didn't take him three decades. And so I get frustrated when I see these problems, and I get frustrated because if we can't do these things, we can't even address these bigger issues where we got kids uh, being sold by government officials. You got people going to do lawful things and getting beat down, just literally beat almost to death. I don't, I mean, I'm stunned. I really, I'm stunned. I don't, my, my spirit does not work like that. And I just look at that. I am just, I don't even know what to do with that part. But there it is. And there's one of the tasks. And some of you might be ready to go for it. I'm telling you that the terrain to understand, it's not an easy task, but no job worth doing seems to be always easy. And that's not my rule either. So why, so all these things that can, uh, can be affecting us, how we respond to each other, how we think we're so right, and we can be absolutely right, but for the wrong, an inapplicable reason, and an inapplicable subject matter, uh, or not a sufficiently comprehensive approachment uh, of all that. We make tons of mistakes, and that is what's preyed upon in us, in this uh, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. It's all, like I said, it's like, look at that, forget all what they say about it, just look at it as the uh, your animal nature frailty manual. And that's exploited. And so you, it's again proved, you can't even go do lawful. You can't use lawful currency of the United States in pennies to pay off a $10 ticket. They'll be beat you to death. They'll beat you near to death. And then you get to go get your remedy after the fact, such as justice. And there doesn't seem to be a cry out about this point. Oh, we'll talk about it ourselves, but there doesn't seem to be a, a concerted cry about this. And so what other things do we have out there that we don't, we, experts say, but then we find out later aren't the same? Or we find out through the time we start looking at, we, we are susceptible to, to the environment naturally and weaknesses uh, that may prey upon us and how we respond. And we don't even know it. Over time, it starts to happen. Uh, we now want to give this a more of like a health side here as we move through uh, about what can be interfering with us, what's put into us and allowed to us uh, to be interfering with us so that we aren't functional. If you got a debility, you're not going to function. The guy gets beat, uh, knocked, beat unconscious, or never beat to death. He's not going to be real responsive after that. 
Uh, you get abused as a kid being sold into slavery by the very government that purports to protect you and secure you from these things underneath objective basis. You're probably not coming out of that too well if you come out. If you come out, we become and we see this gender identity problem fostered and encouraged by the Pope, by the uh, system of that, the Bar Association, these systems. And it's an abuse. And, I, and, you, and you wallow in your abuse, and then the abuse that you wallow in as a victim, you turn as a, as an, everyone now becomes an attacker. And we may get into that if I get to the point of these tabs. But, uh, so what, do we, what else do we have for health problems? That, uh, what else can cause near-death experience? or a slowly degrading death. We're just finding out now if we didn't know before, but if you're into uh, solar radiation type stuff and there is a sun and not Galileo and 2.0 that you're some heretic, you believe there's a sun out there, uh, and there's a, a space and sky that uh, that has uh, irradiation coming in from cos- the cosmos, uh, low-dose radiation of exposure will increase a risk of cardiovascular disease. This is relative to medical treatments. Ionizing radiation was the key word, a term here. Even at small doses, such as those used in performing x-rays, can be, can have harmful effect on the cardiovascular system. Researchers have found this means radiation exposure equivalent to recurrent CT scanning can increase your risk of cardiovascular disease. I won't go on. Uh, this ionization of your cells, of your tissue, is a problem. You get that when you're getting in an airplane. This is what, partly what I wanted to say. We get up and we get these airplanes, fantastic technology, but you get up too high, you get cosmic rays uh, and other rays coming in and maybe energetic rays that are passing through all these so-called layers from the sun directly through port, uh, uh, conduction paths to the surface. Uh, and now not just in an airplane, but to the surface. You're going to be uh, struck with ionizing radiation, naturally. And, and so I just wanted this to let you know, there's a little bit of research that shows that it attacks your cardiovascular system. So now focus on a little bit of that if you need some protection. Uh, one of the things that also then struck me as I was reading this is, okay, well then conduction, ionization, and conduction can be through metallization and things like that. And that triggered this other, uh, this other idea where we find out uh, uh, someone has researched, and, and again, these are maze and potentials because they didn't prove it, but they do have a, they knew, do now have a focus uh, that really does need to be researched that starts to bring up uh, a different aspect of these vaccines Something else they they do to limit your ability to respond to them. If you're be if you're trying to survive a beatdown, uh, you're not going to be too responsive. If you're been hurt really bad, you're not. If you're incapacitated in any way, even by your ignorance of something, even where you attack someone else for being wrong to try and show how wrong they are in their claim, but they're you're wrong in, in the attack because you missed a point. Well, we're we're diminished in all this, and we're not on the point of protecting each other where we need to be protected. Uh, but uh, one of the things that they've been doing, a process, is uh, is giving uh, these injections for vaccines. These affect our health as well. Aluminum in vaccines may cause autism, uh, but they're doing it from it. And now this has been dis- this couldn't be proven in a court of law, and there's a lot of reasons that, that why that could have been. Uh, but not this. Not look at this as a proof. Or there's uh, aluminum in, in vaccines, and they cause it. Look at what they're talking about. Aluminum in vaccines may cause autism, a controversial new research. Well, it's only controversial by those that have set their mind on that it's not, right? They're not open to the scientific method. They're not willing to look at, well, what is this autism, if it's anything? Because really, it's just an observation that they put a title to. But what is this? No one really wants to look past that. Anybody who doesn't want to look past it is really someone who's a, who needs to be put aside because we have some important information that we need to have that's beyond this. That autistic children have up to ten times more metal metal conduction path ionic, ioniza, ionization, and lesser, too, if it's conduction path, remember. Autistic children have up to ten times more metal in their brains than uh, than what is considered safe in adults. Now, I don't know about what's safe in adults. You do... See, why is that? See, I just see the, it's really just a, 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 an oxymoron. Why are they worried about the safe and adult when you go to try and pay them pennies and they'll beat you to death? Or they'll, they'll sit in government, allow people in government, because of not a strict scrutiny on, on accountability, they'll allow your little ones to be abused and harmed and killed. It, it's a wonder to me at some level. But anyway, so let's go back. The aluminum crosses the mem- membrane that, it, that it separates the brain from circulating blood and accumulates in cells 
involved in maintaining a constant internal environment, such as temperature, which I found fascinating. So I don't want to read more of this. There is a cause. They've looked and they found that aluminum does something. The vaccines have compounds that are aluminized. There's other things that do that. Chemtrails are said, although I haven't had anybody fly in an airplane, even a P-51, to go take an air sample to prove that's what's there. Because we have to do the chain of evidence. I haven't heard anybody actually doing that. So until we do that and we don't know for sure, we can make a list, but it doesn't matter. I've told you that they, we can indicate that there is aluminum compounds in those sprays because of that humic acid study I told you years and years ago that kind of indicated what was going on and that they were getting, seeing whether or not they could get rid of the evidence or how long it took for the nature to get rid of the evidence. Uh, but we're seeing the aluminum does something to the internal regulation of your temperature. And so if, it's like any, to me it makes sense that the, the aluminization isn't what causes the autism. It causes an, an, an internal temperature um, deregulation, if you will. It interferes with the temperature regulation. And I don't know about you, but if you have your computer and it gets too hot, it'll shut down. If it gets too hot for too long over time, but not too hot enough, it'll degrade and then shut down. You lose function in it. And I know about that. I told you I've lost my memory after having a fever for two and a half weeks or so. 106, 107 degrees and said you can't do that. Well, I did. But it took away my memory. It messed up, it messed up the, the, the brain. Now, was that due to aluminum? I, I don't know. I don't think so. It was a fever. So temperature and why our bodies are regulated is very important. Spot temperature differences that are able to increase circuits, resistors, if you will. If we reduce this down to the um, silent weapons for quiet wars, electronic function. A resistor that gets too hot will burn out. A resistor that gets too hot over time repeatedly up and down will degrade its resistance and change its capacity inside that circuit and change the circuit's function. So this kind of touches on a little bit different. It doesn't say vaccines are the cause. It says that vaccines could cause them because it goes after and puts aluminum in a spot in the brain that causes this environmental problem. Okay, so we want to, tra those of us that are interested in this, we find that wrong, we make right, we make lists of these things, we track these things down, uh, and we apply them where those of us are in this that want to stop this wrong, or at least correct the inaccuracies in it so that we understand how it's rightfully applied. As you heard me say before, it seems a lot, there's a couple that we shouldn't get, there's a qualities that we shouldn't get, there's substances that we shouldn't have, and we find out they're not needed in these vaccines, actually, and then at that point, a clean vaccine, after you look at it, and that's, and can we get a clean vaccine? But let's say we could get a clean vaccine, then it's the amounts of vaccines that you're getting. If we can prove the theory, again, we don't do, and nobody really sits down and does any of this. We just do studies on studies and studies. But we now see that this aluminum transfer, wherever the source is, can cause a functional change in your brain. I thought it was an important insight uh, for someone who's involved in this, may be able to do something more with it, and you're protecting everybody from this problem, and, and stop just going like semire, uh, mercury is the problem. I've told you, it's not the mercury. They can say the mercury is not the problem, and the mercury is not the problem. It's the uh, biologically altered mercury. The methylation process is what causes it. We find that in nature, in anaerobic conditions where mercury is involved, didn't we? I talked about this a long time ago. And so I'm asking us to keep the facts laid out, and we may have to, uh, the facts probably won't, the facts may change, but I mean the, in, in, in numbers or, or, or importance, um, but, but those fa the facts must be sitting there that you apply reality to. The, the, the real context needs to be applied, which doesn't, does, doesn't seem to be do, done anymore, and we don't have the knowledge in us or the capacity because we're suffered under we're suffering under these little resistors in our brain these little neurons uh, these little uh, connection points that are overheated or maybe not hot enough right we don't know or that are interacting with environmental constraints like do low dose low dosage ionization radian uh, radiation which changes the temperature because it's consolidated in spots or not you it could act as a shield and that's that's also frequency related and so there's a whole lot of interesting science behind this but the problem is is that we're 
we have to understand we are a, a, a construction, we are a creation that is, a, a, um, it can be tampered with. We Most of it we do it ourselves. But it's also our, our agreement to not look deeper to stop things. So these vaccines can be a problem with aluminum, but in a particular function. If that's the truth, then that's what we look at. We stop the other nonsense if that's not provable. Whatever they say about the aluminum. It may be just this. I don't know. Uh, so I'm trying to focus this on trying to keep the right the right path. Uh, and that's, again, if we can prove that the vaccines are valid anyway. I mean, they may not, I don't necessarily believe, um, it's uh, really, it all depends. It really, there's so, it's so many variables, it all seems to depend. Uh, and so, uh, this is what they do. They get just into this, uh, tons of different things we could be looking at, and it really becomes problematic to focus in and, and track down and as I say, then apply that correctly. So you, again, I want to restate, I guess today the, 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 the idea is you can prove you're correct, but it may not, that correctness may not be actually applicable to what you're, you're applying it to. We have to be very careful of, of this. And I, I don't think I would have ever appreciated that until I could really focus on this objective basis I consider as these, uh, it touches across all the problems, this, this land disposal stuff. The underlying, there's like four authorities running when you do this, and, and, and you gotta keep track of every one of them. And if you're not, then you're missing a part of the story. And then, for as much as I'll say I think I see here, it's to the limit of the knowledge about all that. Because it's not like I don't continually, every once in a while, learn some new, a new nuance on how and what went on by learning a new complexity. And essentially, you learn, there was, we are pretty creative. We make all kinds of problems up for ourselves. And, and it's this system called, we, we would think, hopefully, justice in its proper context, properly applied, is, has tried to work out the, how we work our, our problems amongst ourselves and come to some kind of a, it is a compromise at that level, isn't it? But on some principle that can be applied into the future for everyone in the way it, it ought to be, at least as we understand in the United States for property, to be free from all interference, as they say, exclusive possession against the entire world, even the Pope. A vaccine company funded by PayPal owner caught illegally injecting people at a hotel uh, was an interesting story to me uh, that I, I wondered a little bit about. This is a... a um, as I as I wrote from a saw from a, a, a Peter Thiel, he's apparently a big mucky muck in the world, a big influential dude. Uh, what they do to us, what they get us to agree to, to stop our pain, and we'll do it. And I have no judgment against that because sometimes you just want the pain to stop. In this case, is a, a herpes uh, is not a very cool thing. And there's a herpes one, herpes two, and whatever else. It comes from shingles. It, it and you give they give you uh, vaccines which actually cause the stuff. Uh, so at some level, trying to find the vac, some stopping, I don't know about the vaccine being the answer, but it's fine. But what they did here is this uh, globalist guy, uh, Thiel, uh, gave money to a local uh, university uh, to go do a trial study from a professor over on uh, St. Kitts Island, which is offshore. And they inter injected people with this thing. And there's a discussion you can see uh, about all this. Uh, again, I guess to me it's, you can be offered something that you just want the pain to stop, or you want the you want the addiction to continue, or you want the benefit you think you perceive to, to be started and continue for you. You'll accept uh, some of the whatever. You'll accept even the most questionable types of things, uh, even and then complain about it. As, as you see, somebody in Texas said uh, this so-called vaccine that was injected to me underneath this program offshore of the United States, because if I did it onshore, I'd be under I'd be violating United States law. Uh, gave me uh, the the rash that I get with a herpes, and then the comment was, "Well, maybe I need to readjust my vaccine. This was voluntary, and it was an experiment." By uh, you see, and, and so I, I just looked at this. People will do what they do to stop the pain. Uh, it's not a not a cool deal, and they'll accept all kinds of stuff, all kinds of experiments. And we have to guard ourselves against this bit of a frailty. Now, my uh, one of my observations on this was the, the Theo, this globalist guy, a big corporate, I don't even, he's supposed to be somebody important. I don't even know. I don't really care. Uh, really, I don't. It, it's just the observation of what, what decisions do we make? How do we get enticed and induced 
this reflects in my mind other places and other things. At any rate, there's someone in the internet that might be more uh, on the broadcast and the chats who knows feel better. He, they, you can identify him for me. Doesn't that he's willing to put money up to have a professor do his his to stop this herpes because you know that the other end. Oh, we can say it's good for people, but you know there's big bucks involved on the other end of this. They do it offshore because they know that they're violating United States law. And in this case, I wonder that law, the regulation, to make regular the safety applications of how you experiment with people, you're not supposed to, well, except for those exceptions underneath the war powers underneath Title 50. Go look at those. Those are the real interesting ones. But in, in the sense of, con, of, of an idea that, that, that we're, we're, really, we're trying to move, move forward in the best way and not hurting people in the process, uh, they figured out that they would be in trouble. My observation that wasn't even about these guys doing this, because you know the government already experiments on you inside the United States, and there's that exemptions, right? They're already doing this to you. So some of this story wasn't even an issue. It was that we know that this steel guy's putting money into this thing because he wants to get this injection because it's going to be big bucks to him. He doesn't have enough billions. He wants more, and he doesn't care if he hurts people on the way there, that he's going to evade the United States law by going so-called offshore. My observation was that, not just hours before that, there was another story about people coming out of, uh, uh, and, the, and the, the, pop, the problem with the war on drugs, people coming out of uh, South America who become uh, mules, they're fishermen, they're destitute because the fisheries are destroyed, all these re global regulations are killing them, the government wants their people down, they want to suppress, uh, oppress you and suppress you. Uh, that farm, uh, excuse me, um, fishermen ha are looking for work they be, they look for work, and they you can take and you can be one that moves cocaine uh, to a place a, a little closer, even third party nations, from third party nations. Uh, you can use these you move this, this cocaine uh, by ocean, and and you could become you know, have a job. Well, the United States gets involved, and they are now making deals with those nations to be able to to uh, catch all these people that are fishermen, just normal fishermen that can't find fish anymore or are not allowed to fish. Uh, they wouldn't be doing this had they been just left alone, but you know that's the point of the plan. That uh, Those people are collected up out in the ocean, international here, or out in territorial waters of a foreign country and shipped to Florida to be brought under United States law for prosecution for year, up to 10 years that the taxpayer then pays to hold for 10 years before they let back. That I found the offshore actual in territory, international waters and foreign waters uh, visitors, uh, people, were abducted into the laws of the United States. How is Thiel and this university, Southern University, somebody university uh, professor who's dead now, he died uh, for some for whatever reason, how are they actually able to escape? can only be that a vaccine for herpes is not a threat to the organized criminal governmental syndicate set up for drugs the drug war covers. That the fishermen moving cocaine to a third party country before importation somehow is subject to the international off they're offshore but subject to international law seemed to me a pretty interesting anomaly, uh, oxymoron hypocrisy that we sit back and say oh that's cool that's alright or it's not all right. We don't do more about it. But we see the players in the world getting the favors. And this is, again, back to that equal accountability. It, it, it used to be, and I would more agree to the fact, offshore is offshore, period. But, see, I've told you back in 2010, they declared there are no, but United States government, the biggest, baddest military in the world, the biggest bully, declared there were no borders. And they can pick and choose however they want to advance their uh, criminal organized syndicate, whomever the player is, whomever it is, uh, in the position that's allowed and makes these decisions. So, be, again, what more do I say? I know, it's like I saw Gary L. saying, this is where I'm singing, singing to the choir. Well, I don't sing, so I don't know how much singing to the choir I'm doing, but I'm at least talking from the pews, I suppose, talking from the walls, talking from the door, standing at the door, wherever this is, I'm talking to you all that already understand this, but we're not taking action. We're not becoming a, mo a force to be reckoned with in our own right. It may take some time, but we're not taking the steps it takes in order to get accountability again back on the page. And you see when there's accountability trying to be brought, uh, it, it's not very easy. 
to get implemented. That's how far off. It's not that, that you should just look at that and say how far off in, uh, into the caucusocracy we exist. So uh, health issues, uh, the, again, injections, what you can get, what, I, uh, what I've told you uh, before is we can read uh, is going to happen. They're going to ex be experimenting on you. They, they can even experiment in the United States, which they do with the exceptions under Title 50, but that's not good enough. We're going to go offshore, and in one hand, you know, you, you, I can do that over in St. Kitts, inject people for a vaccine, but I can't be a, 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 a poor uh, fisherman moving cocaine from his country to a different country, not the United States. And I could end up in a United States federal uh, prison uh, with the so-called, so the taxpayers so-called, uh, paying for it, so-called. Okay, big plunder going on. Uh, but these health issues are interesting. I told you, uh, again, the, what I called the, in the 99, uh, the current Middle Ages, we would be seeing life in the current Middle Ages. It would be like a replication of the medieval times. Uh, w that I've, we've talked about this plague, the death, the Black Death showing up. Uh, well, we have another another one coming up. It's actually in England. Now, the Scarlet Fever outbreak I I is in England. It's not necessarily the medieval time. It was in Victorian times that this popped up. But, again, we're old old type of things you, you thought we were done with are coming back. And I want to remind you about that DNA they found, uh, the, the plague, uh, there was the plague or something, the Spanish flu that they found in the, in the corpse, in the, in the frozen areas, I think in the Alaska, uh, that they actually exhumed and they actually caught, got it and they stored it and it went into your military complex. So uh, I just want to remind you, memory hole type stuff, these uh, so-called, I'll call them medieval uh, plagues, it's still it's scarlet fever. Uh, this guy called a 50-year high. So it means it's happened before 50 years ago. So it cycles, and there isn't uh, there isn't the uh, it just it's just a natural cycling occurrence that they're bringing to your knowledge as something that says it's here, and we're the experts, the researchers are confused, and we're concerned. And so this is a start to be the fear-based thing. But they get your mind focused on this is what's coming down. They can't control it. You're at risk. What are you going to do? This and that. It's not even here yet. But that, that's what they. There's another log on the pyre of of, the, of your destruction. If you don't look at this a lot closer to see exactly the limitations again, uh, you're you may bring on more to yourself and dis and move yourself from the energy you should be spending on something more importantly than than what they try to tell you here. Although. I've told you that the World Health Organization utilizes these as fronts to run their own scam. And I pointed those out innumerable occasions um, again. And these just all came together as an, in the concepting of, of disease, injection, vaccine, response, new things, big terrors coming along. We don't know. Well, we don't know what to do here. I've told you this was coming. And it's interesting. Here it is. This is the must be the year that it's going to be coming on us as they bring these things along. HIV epidemic in Europe growing at alarming pace from the WHO, not the not the Rock Group, not the OWL, uh, but the WHO, World Health Organization. Uh, they uh, the ep epidemic they actually made a global standard that they wanted a HIV done gone by 2030 or something like that. Uh, they're not going to be uh, getting it. There it is. Yeah, the Sustainable Development Goal target of ending HIV ep epidemic. By 2030, they remember they call it epidemic here, not a pandemic. So this is not one they've invented. This is actually one they didn't have to invent. Why? What was HIV, if you look at the product insert for the test, but the clinical observation of HIV? And I don't, I haven't found that it's changed. So if anybody has the proof of that, mark on the beastyahoo.com. So the WHO is promoting what they call an epidemic on something that's not actually a lab test. It's a clinical observation. They can make it up, like autism, like any other psychiatric harm. So remember how they play this out. It may whatever they're seeing might be becoming an epidemic, but I think we've shown that HIV isn't something. They have precursors for something, but it's not the thing. And they use this stuff in order to encroach on us. Uh, so here we have coming up, all these things coming up, they don't know what to do, alarming pace means they have no control, uh, but that's just the, the notice to you to make you feel like there's no control. Well, I'm going to suggest to you, why don't you make sure that you just have hygiene in your life? Why don't you maybe listen to someone like Grammy Mary who will talk more about this than I, 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 at one time I wanted to talk more about it, but I've got, it's not, it hasn't become important in the regard that I needed to go to. Uh, the oils, 
look at herbal remedies, look at just, like I said, the hygiene, just take precautions, uh, just take responsibility for this and, and stay away as much as you can. As I say, we, uh, we can, it's not, we're not such non-animals that we aren't uh, filthy beasts amongst ourselves. So we, we have to, we really be cognizant of that reality. But upon this alarming pace of growth, and you see they want to interject this 2030 like they have something they could have done by 2030. And then you see it's tied to sustainable development, which is you living under sustainable debt, under shared prosperity, which is, uh, which is austerity and taxation. And the agreement to bring foreigners in upon your culture to make this non-culture, except following the central control that is dictated by these types that will keep telling you that we don't know how this is going on. It's an alarming pace, so it's coming back from the Middle Ages. But, well, what about this pandemic you're now supposed to be? Not an epidemic, no. See, that's a natural one. The natural one also has the problem of wrongful diagnosis, like the HIV. But the one you got to be worried about, really, is the pandemic, because that's the one they made. It's the novel thing they're bringing on you. Not to those people that are in those areas don't disregard the health problems there. This may this plague is real, but it had a function and it had and it and it had a, a an end. Scarlet fever was the same way. Whatever that is, whatever however you want to figure, it has a certain thing it does. It, apparently, it repeats itself. Uh, but be careful. Fifty years is not so so uh, far away that it still isn't within the time that the Brits invented vaccines back in the 1850s. I think it was. This is still all within that construct, that that created uh, problem. At the same time, man was understanding how to live with these deadly viruses and the things, the vectors for them, and and being understanding on how to uh, deal with it, and our bodies actually naturally gaining the capacity to fight them naturally. Uh, And so it looked on on that, on the wave of natural response, did the pharmaceutical, all these inventions, these created uh, uh, fictions come on and take claim. And it looked proper, and it still looks proper to most people. But they rode the tidal wave of natural response, saying they were the cause for that by what they did. Look how smart we are that uh, we were ahead of the game, that we could protect you, so you need us to protect you more. And so we give registration systems for all this and all kinds of stuff. So uh, HIV I thought was interesting until, and then what I thought even more interesting was this story. Because why, how would anybody actually use this device? Although I, they're appealing to your uh, animalistic nature, your competition nature, with their first promotion. Uh, but it occurred to me when I really focused on what other aspect of this promotion, how would they get anybody to actually use this? was the first smart, remember, all these smart things are not so intelligent, a smart condom collects data during sex to show men if they're good enough in bed, was the first headline, or second headline I think I saw, and so that's appealing to your little animal nature, you want to be the best of all in that in that capacity, but then another, uh, another um, uh, uh, simple, more simple uh, uh, headline said, fit bits, online retailer uh, unveil images of first smart condom. Again, not so icon, icon, it's the con, all right. Icon smart condom is what the name is, a lastable band that has a, the capacity, a nanotechnology capacity to do some very interesting things. And you get to send this information to your phone and pass it around to all your friends. Well, I suppose it's not going to do that with your, with everything hacked. This is the big data collection for even that. I told you your most intimate things are going to be uh, sought after for information. Here's the evidence of it. But what I found, what would give people to even use this could be this factor of fear because and the promotion of knowledge uh, would be this little statement I saw re- re- replicated in both uh, reports uh, was the uh, the statement sta- stating that the device is called the icon and can, te- can detect STIs as well as sending data about a, a sex session straight to the wearer's smartphone. Well, it's radio, it's not just to the phone, first of all, and it's probably not just to your phone so that no one else sees. But the, what's this STI but uh, sexually transmitted infections? That 
triggered my thought about this story coming up this week about HIV epidemic in Europe. This is how they get you. Again, stop the pain. I need to know if I've got something. Did I catch something? Let me get the band. Let, let me let me get the let me use this ring. It's going to tell me if I caught something. Not not for, not, not avoid it. No, no I'm going to I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this anyway. But it'll tell me. It says probably tell you that I have a STI. And now we go back to the HIV epidemic. They promote these things about these issues, and you will flock to get the product they threw out in order to give them the data, and they give you a little piece of it to put your mind at ease, even if it's a lie, that uh, you supposedly don't have this thing, that you're not going to be able to be proven that you have anyway, but you believed it. And so they get you to jump from the frying pan to the fire because you want uh, the little animalistic need that you have to know whether you have or don't have and r relieve your conscience of something that may or may not exist, but you've told you don't have. And what do you think? If you did have it and they want to spread the problem, they don't tell you that you have it anyway. Have at it, you animal. Go do it. So this is what I found fascinating. I didn't want to, again, talk about this stuff. It's just done, uh, this not information this revolutionary wearable, wearable tech, I've told you, is a big old trap. Well, this this dynamic is what caught me. Here they have HIV epidemic in Europe. I will not be surprised that this uh, so-called smart, not intelligent condom, I condom is not intelligent, it should have been the S condom, uh, is not promoted in Europe over this because they claim they can detect an STI. They don't tell you that what they are or that they can. They just suggest that it will. On the suggestion, you will jump. And I want you to be aware of that in you. And that's not just on this. It's in every subtle thing that you might think is a need for you. You're preyed upon by your need and you're uh, uh, preyed upon uh, by your uh, inability to resist your and hold your principles about uh, about something that they they make it sound like they can fix something that's really not broke. But actually they are in control of the psychology of it. So it's you're broke and don't know it. And so, again, if HIV is something and it's passing around as an epidemic and it isn't just a clinical, a subjective opinion in a clinic, you've got to be careful for all that. But that, that they promoted this, uh, this uh, condom, uh, smart condom, it's not a condom at all, I think it's just a strap with technology in it, uh, that... They get you on an impetus to think you're doing something for yourself. And in fact, you're, you're, I told you, the Silent Weapons Quiet War says you're going to plug your, they're going to make a place for you to plug in, and you will. Here's another evidence of it, uh, and I'll just move on from there. Surveillance, now here's the, all the big data. Now they're telling you now what they can do with it. Surveillance state, Stanford Research uses AI, so-called. I'm not a, I'm not a buyer of this AI at all. I've been on the record right now. I don't think the technology is such that it's AI. These are some very sophisticated, very intelligently put together uh, 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 basic common uh, digital technology in digital systems. Uh, essentially pretty, uh, they, they take all this data, they take all the insight they have, they, they put it into programs that, that this, the, 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 comment, the uh, computers use and it gives them approximations uh, that can be interpre interp interpreted. They're not actually an intelligence. They're just mimicking a thought, a, a process of how to come to some conclusion. It's all a model as well. Uh, the researchers of AI use AI to determine neighborhoods' bias by its cars. Now they went out and they used uh, the team of researchers at Stanford University, uh, again in California, the, the, well, the main core center for all this nonsense as well. Uh, right across the bay is Berkeley, where they put all this stuff on you. Uh, UN implementations and these uh, sustainable development and the, uh, the the data acquisition problem, the consensus, all that's all right across the bay from Stanford, has trained artificial intelligence algorithms. Uh, now, artificial intelligence algorithms or something, and I understand how they make identities here, uh, to observe and study. Now, they uh, now have the power of observation. You see how they take a computer and they make it like it's you. Uh, they make they give it credibility it really doesn't have, and this is my caution about this so-called AI. Uh, you see right here, I've, 
I didn't read that the first time I read it. They are really giving the capacity of people into this literal math program run through a silicon chip logic, which does or does not have problems. Uh, to observe and study millions of images on Google Street, do no evil, view to determine how people vote by the make of their car. Their algorithms are trained to recognize the make, model, year, and every, of every car produced since 1990 in more than 50 million Google Street View images across the 200 American cities. The data of car types and location were, co were compared against the most comprehensive demographic uh, database in use today, the American Community Survey. We've talked all about this one as well. And against presidential election voting data to estimate if it was artificial intelligence and you had the facts and you had the, the context, it wouldn't be an estimate, folks. But uh, they estimate demographic factors such as race, education, income, voter preferences in a country that's supposed to be colorblind, no race, right? So, uh, at any rate, uh, and I'm not, and race is, is irrelevant here because the lawyer, the race of lawyers was the definition in the Doubleday Dictionary of 1974 to show you who's important. So, they went through and they analyzed from pictures, which is a fascinating technology, that I'm not, I'm giving that much to them, uh, to look at this, create data from images that gave them response, answers they could use, or likely use as an estimate for other things. I wanted to point out these images are the things that these, this is a profile. This is no different than they go ahead and they get off the internet. This is no different than they construct off like the census. This is no different than other big data, other data, even that eye condom that they're going to put together and they're going to create profiles where that address is and where they found you to be. And I keep telling you that this information being col con uh, collabor uh, uh, con uh, collected and then being put by these people that are pretending to be people who know on estimates is going to be how you're going to be expected to, to act. Not as your vote, but how you're actually going to function. Remember, this whole thing really boils down to behavioral control. So I'm wanting to point out here, all this information that's out there, however you end up plugging in, is going somewhere and people are doing something with them. I mean, it really... The, the character rec the, the the image recognition technology really has come a long way uh, to be able to identify things. That's pretty cool stuff. But what they're I want you to read between the lines here what they're actually doing here with it. It just doesn't do cars on the road. It'll be anything they can identify. That's you. Remember the facial recognition, your body walk, all this stuff. And then what do they do with that? They get the the cops. All these people pick it up. All these predators inside the government pick it up and they do what they want to do with it. You have no discussion on that. And I've already touched on numbers of cases. One more today. You can be innocent and they'll make something up on you. Should be something that should get you uh, at least interested. It's not that you're not doing anything wrong. You're not going to be able to do anything right, notwithstanding what you thought. I hope you hear that. It's pretty sedate right now compared to where this is starting to go. And we're we're the ones that are here watching it, and we're the, probably the only ones that are going to be able to fix it. Uh, with you know, There's going to be like a, 20 years of us right now who are listening to me, before me and after me. We're all coming to our end here, it seems. But we're, we, we've really got to do more than acknowledge as a problem and let it go by if we have any care. I think if we have any care at all in ourselves. Oh, what's gaining? What's gaining the, the the voice is these people, these victims, as I or started the broadcast with. We're making victims that respond, that become the, the the only voice out there, and they speak through this victimhood and this abuse, and that's given sway, that's given authority, and we don't figure out how to stop it. And a lot of us are good people anyway. They, you know, we say, well, well, we, I, I'm sorry for your your pain, and I'll give you your space. We don't realize that's a, a tool and a weapon that's coming after us. Uh, that we see uh, evidence of these things. Uh, this information stuff is, is used by the system to do something it wants to do. But you are not free from not having it done to you. But you're blamed when you respond against it. It's a dynamic you truly have to understand is going on right now. 
it's it's really getting a lot of steam the way this works. And I found two articles pretty interesting. Uh, interesting problem right on the front of it. Evergreen State's student newspaper includes no whites allowed opinion section. So in this 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 newspaper this school newspaper, there's a no whites allowed section. Now I don't know how that that stands muster. Um, against, I remember seeing pictures that no coloreds allowed, or white only, and that was no good. How this on its face is allowed, I'm just stupefied. I don't even know where to almost begin at the point, but here's not, that's not my point about this whole thing. It's a standard that you're being treated by that if you remain silent on it, if you don't understand it to address it, uh, then you're going to be consumed by it and you will be disarmed completely. The victims speak through their victimhood to continue the victimization because they're abused people and they blame everybody else for it. And you speak up, you become the target for their victimization. I read one thing and I, I bring this up because another story came out and I heard the identical thing but in different form from a so-called judge who was in fact trying to do justice in a way. I can see the problem here but I'm going to get to that in a second. Here's the statement. There's a no whites condition paper position. You can't if you're a white uh, if you if you identify as white, I guess, but you cannot respond to this section of the paper. It's not good enough just to have an open opinion section and just give your opinion. No, they're going to make it no white no whites can can apply, so to speak. You don't get to drink from this fountain. None, uh, one of the statements coming from this. None of this uh, deny uh, none of this is to deny that no, some rip uh, a professor responded uh, to this condition. And uh, this was the response to the condition. He's a white professor, and I think his wife is white. Uh, and uh, he, he didn't like that position of the no whites. And so their response to him was this. This little section is a much bigger statement. You really read it, need to read this in context. But this was a point I saw echoed by a judge, but in different terms. And uh, so I'll read it first and then give you my uh, what I think it's showing us. None of this is to deny the legitimacy of their fears. The professor and his wife, who were white, who didn't, who was responding to this this uh, discrimination, essentially, it is. Uh, but instead, to point out the privilege there is being able to make the decision to place yourself in a space of vulnerability by publicly expressing opinions and ideas. That was the statement there. I'm telling you what you see here is space of vulnerability is the territory they claim that is being invaded by someone who says, well, you don't have a right to discriminate. And then they're placing themselves into that space by speaking. I found very interestingly a correlation between that and what a judge says in another case at a school it says a U a U.S. judge okay suspensions of students who liked racist memes, and this is a, a bad title for what actually happens. And you need really need to read the case because it was only one student that the suspension was all right. Other suspensions were not allowed off of uh, off of the record uh, for liking. Uh, you really have to parse this one out. Point is that the the judge goes through and explained something, and it sounded so much like the fact of what was said before, that you, as someone who has an objection to a victim, have a decision to be able to place yourself in that vulnerability, to be attacked, essentially, when you speak at all. It's something you actually have to focus on what's going on. But this other case on this, someone put in some fairly uh, derogat very derogatory um, uh, information on a school website or something. It was a private link, that, but it got out like it would. And uh, the one who made the the, the website uh, was all, was never, he just made the space but never contributed to it. The one who put the information on, it was... Uh, calling really for violence and that's the the thing you need to read for here and he he gets suspended from school completely the people who liked it didn't get the suspension was only temporary and they didn't get that removed 
But the one who didn't respond, even though he set up the space, who didn't respond was found to be within the rights of the First Amendment to, uh, to speak, uh, free speech. Is, is an inversion that is very consistent with the space that you volunteer yourself into when you attack someone who's vulnerable. The, the judge here says, Donato said that the discipline taken against no was the guy who made the place but didn't have any interaction beyond opening up the space for, for um, uh, uh, content. Uh, no was tr- what, the discipline against that guy, which was a complete suspension, was troubling in many respects because he did not comment or like any of the posts. Quote, given schools the power to control what students, giving schools the power to control what students are permitted to look at is deeply problematic proposition. Donato said in the ruling, adding that no, N-O-E, no, engaged in protected First Amendment activity. Donato overturned the suspensions of four students who made no comments uh, to only inoffensive ones, but upheld the suspension for the other students and the CE, the one who posted all the uh, content that actually asked for violence. Uh, he uh, supported the expulsion. He also denied a request to have the suspension removed uh, from the students' records. S- quote, some of the plaintiffs have tried to minimize their culpability by saying that their likes were made casually and thoughtlessly, but a plaintiff's subjective state of mind is irrelevant. Donato said in the ruling, adding that it only matters, quote, whether the speech is, at, at issue interfered with the rights of other students to be secure and let alone. So, you tell me where the silence is actually the exercise under the First Amendment that's protected by it. And I'll, I'll show you an inverted world that that's flat and you live on the bottom of it, hanging upside down. The, the lack of speech provided the protection in this case, and you are these folks that create victim status, uh, can identify, be first one in to claim the status, or have a right to be let alone. I want to know what about all the rest, don't they have the right to be let alone? You have to parse this case out very well, but I found very consistently if you speak into a situation and you're not of the ones that look like they're vulnerable, you will be condemned just by bringing in, by speaking, by actually speaking. This is exactly what's stated in the other statement at the other college, that by you being someone of the day, that a victim says is a privilege, in other words, you're the perpetrator of their abuse. You, privately, are the perpetrator. But your very speaking in the form of that brings you into culpability. In this case, says the same thing. And so, I'm looking at reflexive law, it seems to me here, the new behavioral controls, victimization rules, and it's presumed, not innocence, that I, you need to watch how this works. So, way I, I kind of looked at this, I didn't do too much thought in it, but where we are expo- exposed to this little position uh, that they say that the uh, a plaintiff's subjective mind is irrelevant, you need to apply that uh, into what how this discussion goes. Uh, the plaintiff happens to be the one that's they came in as a group of people that were the ones that were suspended. They're trying to right that wrong against them. The judge parses this out, and I do think he was correct to say you can't incite violence as a protection under First Amendment. That's what it sounds like was going on. The rest that didn't incite, we can't penalize that. But he penalized everybody by something unless they had zero interaction. Is not speech. But it was protected under the right to free speech, isn't it? So here's a real big problem, that if you enter in as the one that is the one perceived by the constant victim of abuse to be the one perpetrating it, your very statement becomes a condemnation that's not protected under your right to speak. Is an inversion and a flip flip of the the concept, if you're not getting a grasp of this, you're not going to get a grasp on how to handle this inversion in every other aspect, I guess was my point here. This is how they like do the public lands, the... the, uh, 
cooperating agency, the consensus type stuff. See, the consensus is all the victims, the ones that claim victimhood. And you come in and you try to go against it and they claim you are the perpetrator. See, this model is very well, it's pretty in, evil genius has figured this out against us. And if you don't have this in your mind, you're going to lose probably at every turn. And even if you do have it in your mind, all you can do is expose it because the world has become a victim. Because you're speaking out against it. And what did I say a stakeholder was? Nothing more than someone who can bring a crime against you and threaten you with it by extortion or coercion. How is your being protected under the 14th Amendment by silence actually speaking? Think about the silence is consent as well. Silence is consent to their victimhood, but it, and so you have to agree to it, and you're protected. Is this condition? So, not to get too, too deep in some of this on the, on like the technical side, this is more of a model of application against us. And I don't, uh, see, I don't necessarily be believe the white-black thing. That's, that's another division. We're gonna have to see the abused ones for who they are and put them in their space. Uh, but not let them I interfere with the ones with, that are not abused in principle that are trying to look out, you know, at least for themselves and by that way exampling how others are supposed to example themselves. I mean, I'm, I'm, I feel very, I don't know what else to feel, but sad that, that people are abused and have to live that way, have to function in that. I've never had to, I wouldn't even know about that, but, that doesn't mean that I, because I speak out about a problem that kind of expands beyond that victimization, that affects me where I'm not intending anything at all. I don't think that's a license to do that. And I don't think I'm a criminal or don't get protections because I say, no, that you've, bre you've breached a limit beyond even your victimization. You don't have the right to presume upon me because I say, contrary to your position, that I'm your perpetrator. And this is what's going on in, in lots of things. You get Remember, the deniers of the climate change were, you know, they're, they're heretics. This is how this works. This is just, a, to me, is another model example of how all this works. And if you, once you see it, it, I mean, the stories kind of become irrelevant. It's the, it's you're watching the behavioral control system coming on, and you're gonna have, to, well, you don't, no one has to do anything. You can watch this thing come on you and be destroyed by it, or die right before it gets you. I don't know. Uh, the, this is what's coming on uh, to people. You will be suffering, as we move into this, graded destruction, graded uh, austerity, graded uh, incapacities, uh, less money in your pocket, more taxation, less ways to complain, uh, more disregard about your complaints because you don't learn how to bring it forward. You don't understand the dynamic to defeat some of this. And, and I don't want to speak against someone who's abused, but at some point it's coming to the point they are interfering now with, with a more principled life, with a more proper way to live. Our view is now being colored by their abuse. And to speak out about that becomes, you become a perpetrator is another color of authority. Now if someone picks that up as a third party and they're in official capacity, what have I said that is? That's probably a felony. You can't take someone else's title and use it for your own to come after me wrongly. You can't, you have no right to do that. You're, you're directly, you have a direct abuse and I caused it, now you have standing. But to cause a generalization of this, and just because I speak out to try and protect my point, my space, see, I have a right to be left alone too, don't I? Where would that space be? In silence? And so now we see the the real problem about this and the lack of ec um, equity, if I could say that, because there's really no law behind this. It's just the understanding of how we deal with uh, each other and, and some, some principled mind is supposed to be looking at all this. You have to be that principled mind. Uh, so that's going to be taken away from you as well underneath this one as we get into all this data being surveilled and brought up and all these uh, icons and these things... Uh, learning all about you from all places where Facebook announces it will use AI to scan your thoughts to enhance user safety. We already proved in the other story that these AIs are just approximations on their uh, guess and by golly, remember? So they're going to now, uh, Facebook becomes the minority report, and they're going to now bring it in like it's going to be for your safety. You always bring it in for safety and security. They will figure out whether or not you're going to commit suicide. 
whether you are or you're not. And what harm would there be, right? That's what they say. But you don't understand what they're making up here. My point here is they'll make up underneath a broad scope of safety and security uh, the parameters that they will judge everything you do. So continue with your Facebook. Continue interacting in that regard. Um, and I just have to say that it came to, comes to me a couple of my, uh, my dear friends on this, uh, and these, my listeners and dear friends, uh, use Facebook. Uh, I have trouble getting in because I've got blocks. Every once in a while, I have to go and find some other ways, see if I can get some of it. Uh, I can't get some of the information and transmission because I, I try not to involve myself with Facebook. This is the same problem with trying to get a new, uh, get a new communication system and get everyone to move there. No one does. You continue using what's simple. I'm asking people to get off of this stuff. It's going to be a problem. I don't care how good you are. They're they're making stuff up and then they beat you to death. And that's the least of it. I mean, it's coming now. I mean, they, I told you it gets worse. The government has agencies start getting power in all of this, and uh, they make up what they want, and then you have to defend against it. Surveillance is the state is creating new meta crimes. What have I been saying? This is the, from John Rappaport. The surveillance state has created apparatus whose implications are staggering. It's a different world now, and sometimes it takes a writer of fiction to flesh out the larger landscape. Now, I know fiction's a real code word for we're telling you the truth under these auspices of, of a story so that we don't go hit like we're a lunatic because it's actually happening, but they don't want you to know. He goes on to show you that all this information puts in the hands of a few the power to control the world and to con- consolidate wealth and power and action and function in and of themselves in a way that's way deep state, if you want to call it deep state. It's way hidden. And so you are contributing to this ability to work against you, and you have no defense against it, is what I've been talking about, how you need to back off this stuff and really start looking for alternatives and speak in more uh, consol- uh, more confined areas, even though we have the right to free speech, because you don't. You find out by those two articles, when you speak out, you place yourself in a position to be attacked because you're deemed to be and presumed to be the perpetrator of the one who claims to be harmed by the speech. I'm pausing. You, you really have to get it, uh, really get it, the twist and of this. Talk about a torment. You really have to get after the twist on this one. You have to straighten that path out for yourself because you're going to be consumed and draw, driven off of the narrow path and be beat up in the darkness of this nonsense. So they decide that you're going to commit suicide. Uh, they're going to be on your doorstep. Why? Because they got this other algorithm that found out where you lived and you had a you had a car out front of your house. Oh, they know exactly how you voted. They knew this. They knew that. Yeah, you're subject to us coming knocking on your door for what? Community care. And your Fourth Amendment right don't exist no more because you're someone who needs our help. You're the citizen subject under uh, exactions of every kind, the wrongful extortions. The, you paid in lawful money or currency, and they beat you to death to get the extortion of the charge for disorderly conduct. How many years have I been predicting that exact scenario is, is again given to us last week in the notice? That uh, I know most of us may not see it, but uh, there's no guarantee you won't. And it's going to be uh, brutal upon you. When it does, and it, I'll tell you, when you get brutalized that way, it takes a while to come back, if you can, if you actually do. You become part of that abuse, and you have to work hard to not let the abuse get in front of everything. In other words, whatever abuses I sensed, or felt, or feel, or identify with, that the system has done to me is still a part of me, it doesn't go away. What you have to do is put it aside, put it in its place, deal with it, and, and then use it as the lesson it is, and then move anyway. And that's somewhat difficult at some point, but it's not uh, impossible. It can be done. It needs to be dealt with. You need to take the time to deal with it. And then you move on from it. You use it literally, as they say, you use the weakness, that weakness in that moment to be a strength in the future. And the, seriously, I cannot imagine, uh, and having, hopefully I've really done it. I mean, it still hangs there. You know, I don't like that the violation happened. I couldn't change it now, though. But I'm working to end that over time. And I'm, I'm now given insights I never had before, never was able to be get until uh, to have until I threw that down. I put it in its place, its proper place, 
And I said, okay, this is the, this is the life. This is the dose of reality I've been given. What am I going to do with it? Disregard it? You know, let people call me a perpetrator when I'm actually the victim trying to show how other people have been victimized? No, I'm not going to let that happen either. I've got to come up. It's my responsibility to come up with the points how I'm going to do that. So a belief system is, is part of this. You have to hold in your mind this, this thing. It, it, it's always sitting in my mind on, you know, why, what am I doing? In the face of all this negative, in the face of all the lack of a response, in the face of all the lack of listenership and the lack of support, where I even get support, thank you very much, but in the lack of the majority of it, in the face of the reality that there's billions of clicks a, a week and no one wants to come to the broadcast but a handful, uh, when I believe what I do and what I've, my colleagues do make a change and make a difference for the better, why aren't there more knocking on the door? They said, invent it, they will come. <laughs> That's a joke. Invent a condom ring and they will, well, excuse me, that actually slipped out too fast. Mark of the devil. So they say, woman fired for refusing to be fingerprinted wins battle from unemployment for unemployment compensation. An evangelical Christian who was fired for refusing to submit to fingerprinting, who refused to submit to fingerprinting that she believed would brand her with the mark of the devil, can't be denied unemployment compensation. The Commonwealth Court panel ruled Wednesday. And a very interesting assertion. They do recognize certainly of these things. They do recognize now that for those of you that will pay attention and not throw the book out, uh, throw the uh, the concept or the subject matter, uh, fingerprinting, uh, she said, testified that she believes she testified. She had to get on the stand and actually testify this. She has to make her record for her evidence. She testified she believes fingerprinting is contrary to her religion, and if she submits the fingerprinting, that she will not get to go to heaven because of mark, the mark of the devil, close quote. That belief stems from her father's interpretation of the Bible's book of Revelations. I want you to listen very carefully to your authorities. And then what's required to be looked at is looked at here. The court has held that absence from work due to observation of a religious holiday constitutes good cause. The subject matter here to prove an evidence was good cause. It is analogous here that Kate's refusal to submit to a requirement A requirement that is in opposition to her religious beliefs would also constitute good cause for violating her employer's policy. If you think you're just a slave in this, you're a conditional slave. Is the proof right there. Her employer, that's a master-slave relationship, policy, is not enough to make this slave a complete slave. Is a little office opening opportunity that I think you need to take cognizance of in an important way. As you analyze what I've been talking about all these years, things are still available. you got to look at the right things, though, and you got to address the right things. Otherwise, you're dismissed and you're called a nut. And I'm not talking about the corruption that will disregard all that. That's easy to see eventually when you make this. But this is a standard that says a good cause for an opposition to a policy. The policy only stands until you can show a higher right. Let me remind you that all your legislatures provide policy. Now, one quick thing I want to get to, and I do get right to it here. I'll move on because I did want to get to it. Interesting little article about net neutrality. We touched it last week. Now, I think I heard this on Freaker's Ball as I got back from the meeting, uh, Miners Association meeting, uh, talking about Jeff Tucker's discussion, which I think is fairly good. Uh, goodbye net neutrality. Hello competition. Um, uh, and I also asked you yesterday, or last week, excuse me, last week, to uh, to get involved, make your comments, even those that, that have decided not to. Um, I don't know that I did really lean on one way or the other, but I'm it's, I'm seeing now with the Jeffrey Tucker's uh, suggestion that that because of the propaganda, you may lean in the direction of more uh, regulatory constraint. I wasn't necessarily uh, in that that vein, but we have a, another problem that pops up, and so this brought up an opportunity for me to say, uh, I if you find interest in this, and you, I think you should. Uh, this is our communication rights here by this new method. Uh, the net neutrality is the ruling position. It happens to be a, an, issue, an issue whether the uh, to treat uh, if it, it rolls down to being an issue of whether to treat uh, um, these, these uh, backbone these ISPs as a, as a, a, a public utility. 
Uh, but I was listening to uh, Jeffrey Tucker talk on Corbett Report in his explanation of an article of this article that, that he wrote. That it's a very good article. You can read through it. Uh, I don't know that he. I don't know that it answers one way or the other. I think it's his position, and I think it's valid. That the concept of lack of regulation means a better, uh, m- more, more, um, more investment, more, more capacity. That, that's in a way that's okay, but that's the wrong way to view it because that's the wrong word for the word regulation to constrain. Regulation under the Const- under the federal constitution was in commerce was to make regular amongst the states. And so, in listening, I had an observation. I think you can put this in your in a comment or think about it and think about incorporating it uh, for those of you that might. I say, given that conversation, this is a Twitter thing. I'll, I'll put the link. Given that conversation, if net neutrality is dollar ba- is a dollar based consideration in a bandwidth dependent system. It will regulate the wrong need. Because he opens up his discussion that he says it's a dollar-based consideration. But I know from private uh, from uh, experience, my problem is the bandwidth they allow me. You hear it sometimes. Sometimes we get locked in. We don't we have a bot. We're at, we're at the bottom of what they're going to give us. My upstream is not real good. Up, uh, up to the FTP to uh, Real Liberty Media. Uh, very, very low. It's on the bottom. And so my problem is bandwidth. And so... My my observation here, and you may want to offer this, and net neutrality as the rule can't be passed if it's not going to look at the bandwidth consideration that should be equal across all governments for everybody to have good, adequate access. And in fact, his vid, if you look at it right around three quarters of the way through, Tucker starts to, to, to sort of suffer from a starved bandwidth on his end, notwithstanding whatever he pays for that. So, I wanted to offer an option. When you go to comment, you just don't have to comment on the one or the other. You can bring what they call your own solution, your own context. Maybe the better thing is to use the Title II uh, imposi- interpretation for every company that doesn't meet an adequate response, whatever some techno- techno- technology guide knows, you know, whatever, 20 megabits a second, whatever, the 20 billion bits a second, whatever it ends up being, uh, to, mi- to be the minimum everybody gets. And leave the top end open up to all the development that would come. Might be a better way to approach this. So you use the, the, the regulation as a carrot and a stick thing. If you want to try and drop people down to no, you want to start cutting people off where they can't get the movies, they can't do their broadcast, they can't do this stuff. No, you're going to go into a public utility and you go into the doghouse until you can get your performance up to where everybody has equal access. On the minimum, a good standard. A potential option, I don't know. There's more to all this, a lot more. Uh, but anyway, I want to offer you something to make, make a comment. I mean, uh, you, you can't let some of this stuff go by. It, it may be not going to save everything, but you at least start getting involved with getting involved. So uh, I don't know what else more to do than tell you to do that. I wanted to offer an option. You can go over to, I another link says the EFF.org. Um, protect the open Internet. They want you to, it sounds like they want net neutrality. I'm not so sure. Uh, but they do offer a little app or something on their website or whatever you can get and make it real quick to make your comment. So there's tons and tons and tons of ways to get at doing something. We don't have to sit back. We don't have to sit back and just be silent. Even if I send it off and didn't expect much, at least I've done that. Okay, so I, I hope I've interpreted this net neutrality kind of open. I don't like being limited to nothing, but I also don't like the constraint either. That it does It does help advance better technologies. And these we don't know the future to come about meshing networks that we may not even really need some of this stuff. But anyway, thank you for tuning in today. Hope something I said uh, got you thinking, got you maybe fired up to go do something and focus, uh, uh, get get done the right things, applied right. Thank you, for uh, Grimner, for what you do, uh, reallibertymedia.com, the archives and the broadcaster, and uh, freedomsnetwork.com, a little social network if you're not going to be at Facebook. And then uh, you got uci.tv. Jules, thank you very much for what you do in the past cast broadcast and the recast on Thursday of this broadcast and uh, anybody anybody else out there and promoting the broadcast thank you very much I don't get to you that much but I do appreciate it Vince thank you for what you do for the post on uh, YouTube and uh, the other uh, and Spreaker Uh, I'll be with you next week Tech Diffs are nature willing Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose.
opening up a can of whoop-ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop-ass. 